Yo, what's good boys? So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how to get better FPS. So basically, we're gonna be changing settings in the NVIDIA control panel. I've done this video before, but this is gonna be a newer updated version of it. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right onto the video. All right, boys, so the first thing that you guys are gonna wanna go ahead and do is just right click right here on your desktop and click NVIDIA control panel. And it should pop up, might take a few seconds depending on what kind of PC you have. And basically, all you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is just go to adjust image settings with preview. Now, if you're first going on this for the first time, the NVIDIA control panel app, basically it's just gonna prompt up with different things and you just wanna basically just click accept all of them. And then, yeah. So pretty much, you're gonna wanna click use my preference emphasizing. It's gonna be on quality for you guys at first. Make sure you slide this performance. So basically, if you're wondering what this does, it's going to lower the image quality just a slight bit, not too much, but just a good amount to where you're getting better frame rates for, to where it's basically worth it for what you lose, right? So so just click apply and then yeah and then what you're gonna want to do is go to use the advanced 3d image settings click take me there and then what you're gonna want to go ahead and do is copy all of these settings right here so these settings that i would recommend copying are vertical sync make sure you have that to use the application use a 3d application setting so basically that's just to where you can use it inside of the app instead of it always being on right so yeah and then threaded optimization make sure you have this on these are the most important one texture filtering try linear optimization make sure you have that off texture filtering quality put that to high performance um negative led bias put this clamp anastropic sample optimization put that to off shader cache size i have this on 10 gigabytes but this is more or less based off of uh how big of a drive that you have so if you have like a one two terabyte drive i'll just put it to like 10 gig so basically it's just gonna save the shaders inside of your drive instead of just having to render it right so it just gives you more fps basically if you the higher it is so yeah it's more things that you could save which equals better so yeah put it to whatever you want though uh preferred refresh rate just put that to application controlled because obviously you know whatever game you're playing just is whatever frames you want so that way it's not locked to one only for different games so power management mode put that to prefer maximum performance definitely make sure you do this this is a really really important one and then uh open geo rendering put that to your gpu um max frame rate just put that to off low latency mode make sure this is ultra or you can play around with this this works really good for some games but some games it's not really uh optimized for so it's not gonna work as good and for some games it just doesn't work well at all for some reason i don't know but i just keep it on ultra but definitely play around with it if you want uh but yeah dsr smoothness i don't really know what these do exactly but just copy the settings and yeah anastropic filtering put that to 8x or application controlled but i just have it on 8x so yeah you guys don't want to do that and put image sharpening put sharpening to off once i've done that click apply yet again it will freeze for a second don't worry your piece not gonna crash it's just uh applying all the settings so yeah that's what you guys are gonna want to go ahead and do all right so i'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how to change your guys's refresh rate and also your resolution so basically what you guys want to go ahead and do is just click on your main monitor come down here and go to refresh rate and click on 240 hertz and make sure it's on 240 hertz or the highest hertz it'll go um, and yeah, and then you guys are going to also go to resolution and change your resolution to your native res. So for me, it's 1920 by 1080. And then next, you're just going to come down here and go to uh, the color settings. You're going to want to use default color settings. You can use NVIDIA color settings, but sometimes it does mess up your screen and it make it just look weird. So yeah, after you've done that, just click apply and click yes. And your screen might go black for a second, but it should come back. And yeah, that's literally all you're going to want to go ahead and do for that. All right, so one thing that you guys can also do is you guys can go ahead and change your colors of your icons and stuff like that and everything that you look at on your screen so basically what this is going to do this is going to make the colors look extremely vibrant so if you guys like extremely vibrant colors then you guys are going to want to go ahead and do this step so basically what you guys are going to want to go ahead and do is click on your main monitor and also you can do this for your second monitor too if you have one and basically you just want to come down here to digital vibrance and put it to about 90 percent you can't mess around with it to make it less vibrant or more vibrant whichever kind of vibrance that you like right to so whatever fits you go ahead and change it to this is extremely extremely helpful because it you know colors do look a lot dull especially on pc for some reason so just upping it a bit you know what i'm saying makes things look a lot more eye-catching and it just all around looks better so go ahead and change it if you want you don't have to though but it's just a setting that i thought i would give you guys 
So I forgot to mention what exactly power management does. So power management mode, all it does is when you have it on, say, let's say a uh, power saver or normal mode, I think it has power saver on different cards or I don't know. But what I do know is that when you have it on normal mode, let's say uh, the clocks on the card basically are a lot lower. So pretty much what the card's trying to do is save power, right? Because that's what power management mode does. So let's say you're in running a not hard game to run. So let's say like CSGO. Pretty much what's going to do is even if you're in, let's say, a really low demanding situation, it's going to keep the clocks super low right or even if you're in a really high demanding situation it's going to still try to keep the clocks reload to conserve power and which at times is good but it's also kind of bad because of the fact that there's going to be times where you're probably going to want to have that extra clock right so when you're playing really high demanding games so what preferred maximum performance does is it keeps the clocks really high even if you're in a really low demanding situation which is going to use a lot more power but it's going to be a lot more worth it so just Make sure you put that to perform maximum performance. Also, another thing that you guys can go ahead and do is you guys can come over here to configure surround physics and you guys can come over here and come to processor and make sure this is on your GPU and not your CPU because it's going to go ahead and use your CPU if it is on that to render physics. So go ahead and just put it to your GPU and make sure it's on there and then just click apply over here. And after you've done that, that's pretty much all that you guys are going to want to go ahead and do. Alright boys, this is the end of the video. If this video did help you out in absolutely any way, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. And also, if you guys aren't using credit code switchups in the item shop, don't forget to pop it in. It takes about two seconds to pop it in. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. And stay safe, take care, and peace out.